It is a new era in Baton Rouge as LSU hired Brian Kelly away from Notre Dame. And while he was good with the Fighting Irish, he never was really able to win the big games. Will he be able to do that now in the SEC? So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. Ready to break down, analyze, and predict LSU's schedule and record for this upcoming college football season. One that is going to be huge and interesting for the LSU Tigers. You know, LSU guys are just a couple years removed from winning the national championship. And they had a down year in 2020. Obviously, that was COVID. Lost a lot of starters. They gave Ed Ogeron the benefit of the doubt. And in 2021, he followed it up with a 6-7 and seven season. The Tigers barely getting to a bowl game, getting dominated by Kansas State in that Texas Bowl. And you kind of had a feeling that 2021 wasn't going to be the best year for LSU after the season opener, when they fell 38-27 to to UCLA. The Tigers were 3-3 three three halfway through the season and then needed that upset victory over Texas A&M just to clinch bowl eligibility. But what a way for Ed Ogeron to go out. But you look at Brian Kelly now. You know, Ed Ogeron's in the past. Kelly was the big name that LSU needed. Did a phenomenal run at Notre Dame. A couple of college football playoff appearances and national championship berth in 2012. But he was never able to win any of those. Can he do it now in Baton Rouge? You take a look at the numbers brought to you by College Football Encyclopedia. LSU returned 64% of their production from last year. That is 70th in the nation. They return only five starters. Five starters from last year. Obviously, some other production factored in there. But this is an offense, guys. We'll start there. That was 90th in the nation last year. That's an area they've got to improve. And right now, the question is, who's quarterback? Is it going to be Miles Brennan? Is it going to be Jaden Daniels, the transfer from Arizona State? Is it going to be Garrett Nussmeyer, who got some playing time last year? No one really knows. You know, Brennan might be the best option, but ultimately it's up to Brian Kelly, and we might have to wait till week one to find out. So regardless of who's quarterback, though, they've got a great supporting cast around them. Kayshawn Boutte is going to be one of the best wide receivers in the conference. John Emery is back at running back after sitting out last year. There are a couple of questions on the offensive line, but from a skill perspective, LSU's got it if they can figure out their quarterback. When you look at the defense, pretty strong defensive line. That's where LSU's strength is. They were 65th in the nation defensively last year, but they've got Ali Gay up front. They've got B.J. Ojolari up front. That defensive line will be one of the best, not just in the SEC, but I say in the nation. The secondary, one that ranked 80th against the pass last year, that's where LSU has to improve. But they went out and added a pair of transfers from Arkansas and Greg Brooks and Joe Fouché, both of which will make an immediate impact and hopefully boost those secondary numbers. So you take a, LSU, take a look at LSU, guys. Take a look at their schedule. You know, I don't think many people are expecting the Tigers to compete in the SEC for a West crown to win the conference, to make the playoff. But a solid bowl game would be a good first year for Brian Kelly in terms of laying down that foundation. They open the season up against Florida State in New Orleans. And this is a huge game for both teams. Uh, but I would say more so for Florida State. Because uh, Mike Norvell's been in Tallahassee way longer than Brian Kelly has in Baton Rouge. And they've got some sky-high expectations. At least that's what they want. They want to win. They want to be back to where they were from you know, 2013. Problem is, they're not there yet. LSU could get there quicker than Florida State, and I feel confident about that. I also feel confident that LSU will win this game over the Seminoles. And why? It's because you win football games in the trenches. Florida State's offensive line is not up to par, and I truly believe that LSU's defensive line, one that is so good like we just mentioned, will exploit those offensive line weaknesses so much that Florida State will struggle to move the ball in New Orleans, which is right in LSU's backyard. The Tigers open up the season 1-0 on Labor Day Sunday, only Sunday game in college football, and LSU gets it with the whole nation on Brian Kelly's debut. They beat Southern in Week 2. No issues there. Then they take on Mississippi State, a team they beat 28-25 to last year for that score, making the game look a little bit closer than maybe it really was. Uh, this is obviously a game where LSU secondary will be tested because this is Mike Leach's air raid offense that he runs down in Starkville. Will Rogers is one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC, maybe in the country. But outside of that, if Brian Kelly can devise a solid defensive plan, you know, maybe rush three, drop eight, they should be able to stop this air raid. They've had pretty decent success against it in recent years. Well, I say that. They've won last year. They got torched in week one of that COVID year against KJ Costello. But LSU under Brian Kelly should be able to win this game, especially with the game being in Baton Rouge. Home field advantage, Death Valley, as we all know, one of the most difficult places to play. They'll show up, show out, and get a narrow win over a good Mississippi State team. 
So just like that, guys, Brian Kelly is 3-0. and We'll make him 4-0 and with the win over New Mexico. So they navigate the month of September undefeated. They're a top 15 team, more than likely. And then they get a really big test on the road, their first road game at Auburn. And here's the thing, guys. I'm going to go out and say right now that I think LSU wins this game, despite it being at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Because here's the thing. While LSU wasn't great last year, and while I don't think they're going to be great this year, LSU should have beaten Auburn last year. They fell 24-19 to to the Tigers. But had it not been for a wild circus touchdown pass from Bo Nix, LSU wins that game in Death Valley. And I know it's a shoulda, woulda, coulda type of situation, but again... LSU had the talent and had the means to win that game, and they just fell short. Blew that 13-0 lead. Now it's at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Auburn, I don't think it's going to be that spectacular either. You factor in that I believe LSU is a little bit better uh, in the trenches right now. Auburn's strong up front, but defensive line-wise, I give the edge to LSU so much they can exploit that Auburn offensive line, shut down the run game led by Tank, Tank Bigsby. You factor in that LSU's won 10 of the last 15 games against Auburn, and I think Brian Kelly gets a signature win in the SEC his first road win as a, as the coach of the Tigers, first road SEC win as the head coach of the Tigers, and LSU guys is five and zero, oh, and people are maybe talking about them competing for a playoff spot, competing as the biggest threat to Alabama in the West. Things will start to calm down a little bit on October eighth, where I believe they fall to Tennessee. And a lot of people will say, how is that possible, right? You know, we just harped on how great Death Valley is. The game is in Death Valley, uh, but here's the thing. LSU is going to be coming off a close, physical game against Auburn. Tennessee will be coming off a week of rest. So the Volunteers are well-rested here. They proved last year to me they're not afraid to play anybody under Josh Heupel. Yes, these two teams have not met since 2017. Yes, they have not met in Baton Rouge since 2010. Yes, LSU has won five straight against Tennessee. We are aware of all of these numbers. But a well-rested Tennessee team, a Tennessee team that will have one of the best offenses in the country, I believe, can come on the road and take down this LSU team that still will have questions in their secondary. And with a great quarterback in Hendon Hooker that only threw three interceptions last year to 31 touchdowns, I believe Tennessee's offense exploits this LSU defense. It'll be the best offense I think they've faced all year long from a balance standpoint. And LSU drops their first game, 5-1. and one. They dropped their second with a road loss at Florida. They beat the Gators 49-42 to last year, but now it is in the swamp. Anthony Richardson is in at quarterback. Having full reign and quarterback consistency, something that Florida really didn't have last year under Dan Mullen. And let's keep in mind that Florida's defense, severely underrated, especially in that back seven. Very strong secondary, very strong linebacking core. And with that home field advantage on their side, LSU may be reeling a little bit after their first loss. I think they fall in the swamp. I guess a Florida team that also wants a little bit of redemption, especially defensively, after that poor outing last year. So 5-0 and goes to 5-2. and People are starting to freak out a little bit in Baton Rouge. Brian Kelly calms things down a little bit with a win over Ole Miss. Yes, they fell to Ole Miss last year 31-17, to but again, game is now in Death Valley, and we keep harping on that because that's true. LSU owns a significant edge at home, more so than other teams because of how difficult Death Valley is and how big of a role their fans play. But I think at this point, by October 22nd, LSU's offense, if there are any questions, they'll be solved. They can hang with Ole Miss's offense, one that will be one of the better ones within the SEC. And defensively, while Ole Miss should be improving, I give LSU the edge on defense, 100%. It's a home field advantage edge, a defensive edge, and an offense that can hang with Ole Miss. To me, it adds up for a victory for the Tigers. They win that game, they're going bowling, 6-2. and two. Then the schedule gets brutal. The month of November includes games against Alabama, who made the national championship last year, Arkansas, who won nine games last year, and a Texas A&M team who failed to live up to their expectations but has lofty ones again in 2022. We'll go through them quickly. After the bye week, believe they fall to Alabama. They only lost them 20-14 to last year, so not a bad showing in Tuscaloosa. But a lot's changed. LSU has lost a lot. A lot of key pieces they got to replace. Alabama lost a lot, replaced a lot of them through the transfer portal with big time playmakers like Jameer Gibbs, Jermaine Burton, and Eli Ricks in the secondary from LSU. I will tell you right now that I believe Eli Ricks play, makes a big time play in this game in the Valley. Returning home for him, they beat LSU. I don't know if anybody can take down Alabama this year. That's how reloaded and restacked they are. So despite the bye week, LSU drops this game. We always talk about the Alabama hangover, something that we saw time and time again under Les Miles. Not so much under Ed Ogeron, but did every now and then. 
We're going to see it again on November 12th with a loss at Arkansas. The Razorbacks won 16-13 in overtime last year. A solid defensive showing by LSU. Arkansas's off offense should be much better than they were last year, which is scary to think about. K.J. Jefferson, Jaden Hazelwood, trio of running backs. LSU, I don't think defensively is going to have enough to stop that. They're not going to have enough to win this game on the road. We've seen classic matchups between the Hogs and the Tigers battle the Golden Boot time and time again, regardless of what records are. But Arkansas, as a whole, to me, is the better team here. They can win in Death Valley last year at night, we should add. They can win in Fayetteville now. This is always a big game for the Razorbacks. So they win this game. They drop two in a row for LSU. They beat UAB, so that's their seventh win of the year. And we believe they fall at Texas A&M in the season finale. Uh, another reunion in a way. Max Johnson, the LSU quarterback last year, very well could be the starter for Texas A&M uh, this year. Max Johnson threw the game-winning touchdown pass to beat Texas A&M last year in Death Valley. And now he's going to have his chance to beat LSU in College Station. And I believe that's exactly what it's going to do. A&M's defense is too strong. It's senior night for the Aggies. They've got the 12th man on their side. Johnson, a very, very solid quarterback on top of that. One that's going to test his LSU secondary. All those pieces coming together, guys, for an A&M team that at this point could be in the hunt for the playoff. Could be in the hunt for a New Year's Six Bowl game. We don't know. But regardless, across the board, this A&M team to me is better. And night game with the 12th man on their side, to me, doesn't bode well for an LSU team that's just going to be going through a bit of a rebuild. Trying to find all their pieces, trying to find their identity, trying to recruit and rebuild up a little bit. So right there, guys, we have LSU going 7-5 in 2022. And I know a lot of people will hate this prediction. They'll say they should win 8, 9, maybe 10 games. The fact of the matter is, LSU won't do that. Brian Kelly struggled to win the big games at Notre Dame. He'll struggle to win the big games in year one at LSU. That's to be expected. If he's still doing that next year or the year after, you can get concerned. But right now, he's trying to lay a foundation. 7-5 and five with a shot at 8 wins if they win their bowl game, solid foundation. And then next year is when I believe the LSU can bounce back and really start contending, not just in the SEC, but on the national stage. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Grid Iron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Make sure to check those out and sign up for those today. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Grid Iron Expert.